Local programming on KRWG Public Media made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to From Terras at Changing America. I'm your host, Anthony Morano. During the upcoming election, New Mexico voters will be asked several general obligation bond questions that will be crucial to New Mexico State University. There's no tax increase associated with the approval of these GO bonds. One of the bonds, GO Bond C, will provide over $30 million for construction and improvements across NMSU system. Here to tell us more about what is on the ballot with these bonds and why they are important to NMSU's future is NMSU President Dr. John Floros. President Floros, thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to start off with that question. Uh, how important are these bonds to NMSU's future? They're very important, Anthony, uh, not only for the different campuses out there, but for our main campus where we have uh, a series of buildings that we have to build to support uh, a very big segment of our economy, and that's the agricultural and the food system economy, as well as the biomedical part of our research component. So we have a list of buildings that we want to build. Without that bond, we will not be able to build them. And if we do get the yes, and if we do build those buildings, uh, we will be able to improve our teaching enterprise and attract more students. We'll be able to improve our research enterprise and do a lot better work to help our agricultural industry, particularly our animal uh, agriculture. And we'll be able to, to help our uh, economy and, and our industry and our communities. So I, of course, want to talk with you about Go Bond C in depth, but Go Bond B uh, has a chance to offer $3 million for statewide library resources. How does this play a role with NMSU? Well, we have one of the biggest libraries in the southern part of the state, and we serve not only our students and our faculty and our staff, but we serve the community in general. And, you know, uh, uh, support for our library is crucial. You know, these days, uh, there's a lot of information out there and also a lot of misinformation out there. And libraries are crucial to really uh, getting the right information to the right people. Uh, plus, on top of that, uh, Books are not really the way people get their information anymore. Uh, there's a lot of electronic uh, issues that we have to face. We have to upgrade a lot of our uh, processes, a lot of our systems. And so support for our libraries are crucial for us uh, as a library within the, the university, but also for the university to, be, to really become one of the elite universities when it comes to research. Okay, now Go Bond C offers $30 million for NMSU projects if it is approved by the voters. One of those projects is an $18 million project for biomedical and agricultural facilities. Uh, you mentioned part of this earlier for the Las Cruces campus. Can you tell me a little bit more about these projects? Yes, so there's a series of, of uh, buildings that we're going to try to build with the, the, the bond money. Uh, the, the first building uh, pertains really to biomedical research. This is uh, a building that will help us do more work in the broader health science area, from cancer-related research to virus, just like the coronavirus, mosquito-transmitted viruses, and the like. It will provide us with the tools and the facilities to expand our research when it comes to health-related sciences. Uh, so it will it will help our College of, of uh, Agriculture, it will help our College of Science, Arts and Sciences, and it will also help our College of Health Sciences. So when, when you look at that particular building alone, it will be a very important building in both the teaching, but primarily the research component of, of who we are and what we're looking forward in the future. Okay, so how do these buildings enhance those programs? So this is only one of several buildings. The rest of the buildings will, will really improve our ability to do animal work uh, when it comes to, uh, to our agriculture. It will improve our ability to do uh, water conservation and natural resource research. So there's a whole list of things that we do that pertain to both teaching, 
as well as research, as well as connecting with the public and getting that information out to the public and bringing the public into the university. For example, one of the facilities will allow us to bring elementary school, middle school, and high school students to campus to show them some of the things that we do with animals and, and what animals feel like and look like, how, you know, how do they get uh, sick and how do they get better? Uh, what do we do with animals all the way from the ranch and the farm all the way to, to uh, the consumption? Now, agriculture is so important to NMSU and the education it provides and, and some of its programs. Uh, there's $3 million on the ballot uh, as part of these projects with Gobon C, $3 million for agricultural centers across the state with NMSU. I know I've done reporting uh, up in Los Lunas about some of the research going on at agricultural center there. Um, can you kind of share with us and our audience just how many centers could be affected by this across the state within the NMSU system? Well, we have roughly 12 different science centers all throughout the state uh, where we actually have faculty and staff and in many cases students that they work there. Uh, each one of those centers serves the local community and the local uh, economy. Uh, many of them serve bigger, broader areas, uh, but each one of them has desperate needs for all kinds of things from roofs in one place to walls in a different place to you know, extending, extending some of their facilities in, in a different place. Uh, all those 12 uh, ag centers, science centers, have been uh, neglected for quite some time now. We haven't been able, we don't have the money to invest in those centers. So this will give us an opportunity to go out there and we have a very, very long plan to, to really improve all of those centers. We're not going to be able to improve all of them at once. We're not going to be able to do everything at once, but the $3 million is a good start for us to start investing in several of those centers out there. Now, still discussing Gobon C, over $30 million for NMSU projects. One of those projects is $3 million for data infrastructure at New Mexico State University, along with upgrades. How essential is this? I think that's pretty common knowledge for a lot of folks who may be viewing this, but how is this going to improve data infrastructure at New Mexico State University? Well, we've been trying to get some support to uh, improve our data infrastructure for quite uh, some years now. And this is the first chance we're gonna get to actually do that. This amount of money will allow us to upgrade uh, much of our computing uh, capability, particularly when it comes to data. I mean, these days, data is extremely important and, and we have a lot of different types of data that we collect. Our researchers are co collecting data. Uh, we have data that pertains to uh, uh, our research that we do that's very sensitive when we do research with the government, for example, you know, defense-related contracts and like. So we have a lot of data that we deal with as a research university. We need the infrastructure to be able to, first of all, secure that data so that people from all over the place can get to it. And secondly, for us to be able to have the ability to use that data uh, when we need to use it and all the faculty that they need to use it the way they want to use it. So it's, it's an infrastructure improvement that it's way overdue. I mean, this is now 2020 and, and this was a project that we needed to do several years ago. This will allow us to really move the university to the next level when it comes to data infrastructure and, and how we protect our data, how we collect our data, how we analyze our data. Do you perhaps need to improve staffing when it comes to uh, data management or folks who are working to secure our data at uh, New Mexico State University? Um, obviously, data infrastructure is so essential to uh, 2020 and what we're going through right now with the pandemic and uh, possibly in the future, um, we may be relying on on uh, more Zoom meetings, more uh, solid, secure data infrastructure. So can you, can you share with us a little bit more about uh, that and as far as like staffing and recruiting staff if needed? Well, it, you know, what we're going through right now, it's a perfect example of what happens when, you know, you're prepared for some things. For example, mid-March, we decided to go online in every class. We have more than 4,000 classes you know, all the students were, went online to, to finish their semester. 
two months before that, we had actually signed a contract with Zoom to be able to use Zoom as a platform for us to do online education. If we didn't have that, it would be a lot more difficult for us to take 4,000 courses and instantly from one week to the next, translate that into an online platform and make sure that our students meet their, their academic goals. So this is just one example of how data is extremely important today, how connectivity is very important today. I mean, we're sitting here talking to each other from you know two different locations. This, this was not necessarily all that easy just a few months ago or, or a year ago. It's a lot easier today and it will continue to improve. It will be a lot easier a year from now. So that infrastructure comes with uh, demand for yeah, it appears we're having a, a little bit. It comes with. Okay, it appears we had a little, a little Did bit I, of a slowdown with out? the with the Wi-Fi connection there at a at a appropriate time. We're talking about data infrastructure and why it's needed here at uh, New Mexico State University to enhance that. Uh, but you you mentioned uh, that how important it was uh, to obviously. Um, uh, education and faculty and staff and being able to communicate uh, with everybody. But I, I want to also talk about another uh, issue with this bond, and that is uh, just under six and a half million dollars for campus-wide infrastructure and improvements along the NMSU system. Um, what sorts of projects are we looking at with that? Well, we, we have a tremendous uh, what I call underground infrastructure all throughout campus. You know, we have tunnels all over the place that we take wires and we take pipes and we take steam and water and electricity and, and you know, data, uh, 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 all sorts of things happen underground. Those tunnels have not been maintained properly for quite a long time. We have started this process. We've been maintaining for the last few years now and this, you know, this amount of money will actually allow us to finish that project and, and really bring all of our underground infrastructure up to, up to snuff. So we have the ability to, to connect better, at least within our campus, and, and to be able to locate any kind of trouble at any, any given time. And hopefully we won't have the troubles we used to have at this point. So that's, that's a, a physical infrastructure as well that uh, So, I mean, with the, these two bonds uh, that are on the ballot, uh, I, I think we went over the projects pretty good, but is there anything else with these bonds that you would like our audience to consider when they go to the polls uh, to decide whether they want to approve these or not? Well, I, I, would, I would say uh, three different things. You know, the, the one part is the majority of the facilities we're gonna build, they're gonna serve a very large segment of our economy within the state. That's the agriculture economy. Agriculture alone uh, is, is about two, uh, 20 or 21% of, of the GDP of the state. So these buildings are gonna serve a big segment of that economy. The second component is that specifically, many of the buildings will serve the animal agriculture sector which is actually the biggest part of our agricultural economy. So just the animal agriculture alone offers about $2.2 billion of GDP per, per year. Um, the third component, the third part that I wanted to talk about is the biomedical center. Obviously, you know, this virus, the COVID-19 brought it into center right now that health is extremely important. So what this biomedical center will allow us to do is to be prepared for crises like this one that will come down the, down the road. And we will have to face those crises. They're coming. This is not something that we didn't know it was coming. We knew it was coming, but we weren't really well prepared for it. So this center will help NMSU, help the state, help the country, the world for that matter, be prepared for those kinds of pandemics, those kinds of diseases that we don't have enough facilities right now to do the work that we need to do to be prepared. Do you think that this is going to uh, change higher education, a lot of schools investment in bio um, medical research and, and this issue? 
Uh, well, as a country, we've been investing a, a huge amount of money in biomedical research and pharmaceutical research and, and medical research. Uh, but I think this virus and this crisis will probably intensify that investment. So I do believe that as we move forward, uh, we will see a higher investment in, in medical related research in, in the country, as well as within different states. This particular building, it will help us compete for quite a bit of that money. Now, I want to talk about NMSU and its response to COVID-19. Uh, you made the announcement that the university would be going to on, an online format after the Thanksgiving break. Um, what were some of your decisions uh, that, you, that you were really weighing uh, to, to make that call? So when we made the decision to, uh, to bring the students back in the fall semester, uh, we knew that this was a, a difficult decision. It was not made easily. Uh, we had experts on the table. We had a lot of our faculty and staff that understand both the, the virology and the pathology as well as the, uh, the public health issues. So we made the decision to, to bring the students back, but we knew at the time that every time we have a break, every time the students leave the campus and go out to meet their families, to meet their friends, to, to, to go and do something, when they come back, you know, two, three, four, five days later, they will come back in a new reality. And proof of that is what happened during Labor Day. If you look at what, what was happening at NMSU before Labor Day, we had 21 consecutive days of zero cases on campus. Not one. Why? Because we treated everything that came as we started. We isolated the people, our students and our faculty and our staff were very conscientious. They were wearing masks. They were social distancing. They were doing all the things they had to do. So we really cut it down, the transmission next to nothing. With Labor Day, as people went out, faculty, staff, students, they mingled with their families, they mingled with their friends, they mingled with their neighbors, they had parties, whatever happened. When they came back, we started seeing an increase in cases. This is exactly what we're trying to avoid during Thanksgiving. It's a much bigger break. People go out. We know what happens during Thanksgiving. Families get together. We all sit around the table and, and we, you know, transmission will happen. We don't want to jeopardize people coming back to campus and bringing you know, the virus back to campus. Instead, we decided that it's best if we go online from that point on and the students can stay home and they can finish their semester the last week or two so that we don't have uh, an issue with, with COVID-19. So for the spring semester, there's obviously a lot of things to consider, uh, including what you just discussed about students traveling home going to be with their families. We're talking about a winter time, so folks aren't going to be outside and spread out. They're gonna be more uh, likely to be inside and uh, with people in, in a close environment, perhaps their family, for example. What are your concerns about the spring semester looking ahead and where are some, what are some areas that NMSU needs to improve in for the spring semester? Well, we, we have a team uh, specifically looking at what are we going to do with the spring semester. It's, it's a rapid response team with a lot of expertise as part of that. They're, they're going through a lot of information right now, and they're going to come back and they're going to make a suggestion. But uh, it's going to be the decision is going to be made based on the information we have at the time. Uh, as, as, as we see with the data right now, globally, we see the cases are going up. Within the country, we see the cases are going up. Within the state, within our own county right here, Doniana County, the, we have a increase in terms of cases. If this continues, if we don't manage to bring transmission under control, if people don't realize that this is, this is the second wave or the third wave of, of coronavirus and it's serious, uh, we'll, we'll have to make a different decision at that time. But right now, we believe that as people understand the gravity of the situation, as they understand how important it is for them to wear their masks, social distance, wash their hands, take all the precautions that we've been taking for several months now to continue to do that, 
Uh, if the cases continue to increase, it's going to be a whole different situation. If, however, managed to get transmission in control, under control, and we don't have as many cases, then we will be very open to bringing the students back in the spring semester and, and continue to, to, to have uh, classes, you know, some classes face to face, but some classes not face to face, just like we do now. Okay, now I want to move on and talk about another issue, and that is New Mexico State University being a Hispanic serving institution. Can you share with us what does that exactly mean? And is there anything that the university has to do or uphold or criteria it has to meet to be able to have that distinction? Yes, there are several criteria. The simplest one is that you have to have, uh, you know, a, a, a large enough population of Hispanics for you to be to, to re, really even apply to become a Hispanic serving institution. But really the essence of, of what that means is that institutions that have have been named Hispanic serving, really what this tells is that we are equipped to really treat Hispanic students or students with Hispanic heritage, as well as others, because we're not just a Hispanic serving institution, we're a minority serving institution. So we are equipped to really treat those students in a way that increases their possibility and their, their uh, chance for success. If the majority of our students, which are all, you know, that we, we have uh, about two thirds of our students are Hispanic on the Las Cruces campus and about three fourths are, are minorities. The majority of, of those students are first generation students. That's not the case if we had a majority white population. The, the, if, if, if our students all came from a middle class, upper class uh, uh, background, there wouldn't be a first generation student. Being a first generation student coming from a different culture means that you don't know a lot of things and how to do those things when you arrive on a campus like NMSU. So we have services in place to work directly with those students and help them understand what it means to go to college, what it means to take classes in a certain way, what it means to ask for help when you need that help, what it means to, to, to say, it's okay if I have this need or that need, we're here to support you, we're here to help. you. But it does not mean that we don't serve the rest of the population. It does not mean that we don't serve all students. We just, we're designed to help first generation students, students from a different background, that they don't really understand how the system works. We help them figure it out. We help them succeed in a way that most other universities are not equipped to do. So how often is the university evaluated to maintain that status? Uh, I don't know how often this 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 happens. I mean, if it's if it's anything like the accreditation, it takes several years for for this to to to, ha to happen. But uh, it's it's something that you know it, it's we take very seriously as a university. The fact that you know we have uh, the, the Hispanic serving institution uh, uh, mark, we take it very seriously, and it to, to me it means that we have to help those students more so that they can succeed and we can be true to, 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 to the character. Uh, you know, I, 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 I gave an example in, in uh, one of my talks, you know, last year, you know, before the crisis, you know, I, I remember I walked into uh, a big room and outside there was one of our students uh, and he was of Hispanic heritage and he was a sophomore. This was his second year. He was just starting. And, and I asked him a couple of questions before I went in and it was very clear to me that he felt that he did not, he should not go into this, this room. And I said, why not? Why can't he just go into the room? Because the room was full of companies that are looking for students to, to go to do their summer internships. They were looking for students to go get jobs. And, and so really the student didn't understand that this was for him. This is an example of how we help students, right? The next, you know, two months later, I saw him in the in the somewhere on campus, and he says, "Because of you, you know, I found a, a summer scholarship and I mean a summer internship, and so now I'm I'm going to work for this company this coming summer." And and since then, you know, this this individual, this this student has done very very well. 
So it's, it's an example of how we treat our students and what services we have in place to, to help students that sometimes they can't help themselves because they just simply don't know. So we just have under a couple minutes left, but I, w I would like to hear a little bit more about uh, how do you evaluate if the university is properly staffed uh, with the p folks in the right places to be able to continue with that mission? Well, we, we have uh, a lot of data. We're gonna go back to data again uh, that we're looking at right now. And you know, this data not only looks at how we are staffed as a university, but how do we compare to other universities with similar mission, similar makeup, similar size. We have the ability to compare ourselves to a lot of other universities for you know, how we're staffed, you know, how, how many faculty we have, how many researchers we have, how many students we have, you know, what does it mean to, uh, to be efficient in this particular service or not, right? So we have a lot of data that we're starting to look at right now. And if you look at our strategic plan, you know, we have four major goals, right? The three first goals are all academic in nature. You know, we're talking about student success and how do we do our teaching better? How do we educate our students better? How do we help every student, you know, Hispanic or not? You know, how do we help the students succeed? The second goal has to do with research. How do we help our faculty become better researchers? How do we help our faculty really improve and increase our, their scholarship in terms of research? The third has to do, how do we help their communities? How do we help our industry? How do we take what the university knows out there? The fourth has to do with how do we build a better university? How do we increase our efficiencies? How do we increase our, our productivity? What do we need to do to become a better university? That's okay. Um, well, unfortunately, uh, President Floros, uh, we are out of time, but I want to thank and I you. I think I just lost you. <laughs> well, you're back with us, but I, unfortunately, we are out of time right now, but I do want to thank you for joining us to talk about uh, these Go Bonds and so many issues uh, at New Mexico State University. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us on the program. Thank you for having me, Anthony. Appreciate hey. it. And we want to thank you for joining us for the program, of course. And remember, you can always stay updated with the latest news at our website, krwg.org. I'm Anthony Murnau. We'll see you next time.